Let me start getting this thing popping. How y'all living, man? Waiting on everybody to pop on in the room. What's good with you? What is good with you? What is good? What is good? What is good? How's everybody doing this evening? Getting ready for the weekend. Hope everybody had a great week so far. Ladies and gentlemen, while everybody's piling on in the room, we're going to chop it up as we always do. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, don't forget the film microphone check in theaters in a couple of weeks, guys. We only have a few weeks left for the groundbreaking phenomenal film microphone check coming out Memorial Day weekend. What's the date today? I'm looking at the date today. So we got yeah, basically about a month got a month and um i'm going to be traveling around doing a lot of promotion for the film in a couple of weeks um but it's a phenomenal piece man you guys got to go get your tickets because there's going to be special screening engagements in theaters in los angeles new york san diego oakland Dallas, New Orleans, Denver, Indianapolis, Chicago, Atlanta, Washington, D.C. All right. So go to microphonecheck.com and get your tickets. Now, I understand a lot of people want the film to come to their cities. We're already pretty much set where we're going to do it. People are hitting me up. Man, can you have a screening in Columbus, Georgia? We're going to have one in Atlanta. That's the closest place. Y'all better get to one of the big cities. Can you have something in Toledo, Ohio? No, you got to go to Detroit. That's a little hour drive. Y'all can make it up there. So everything is already set. It is what it is. Um, if it's not playing in a city near you, just wait for the Blu-ray to come out. The Blu-ray will be out shortly afterwards, but... You, you want to see the film in the theaters. The energy is real different when you're in the theaters. And the New York screening, that one's going to be insane. There's two screenings on the 25th of May. The first screening is already sold out. The, the second screening, the 10 p.m. screening, that's halfway sold out. And we're going to have a big red carpet, big media blitz up there in New York. So that one's going to be hot. So go to microphonecheck.com, ladies and gentlemen, microphonecheck.com for that. Now, family, I'm going to get some calls from the family in a minute. I'm going to check in with y'all in a minute. I do want to touch on a few things first. Did y'all see um, DJ Academics was doing a, an interview with Donald Trump Jr. up at Mar Largo? And uh, they started talking about reparations and... Um, Academics kind of brought up, hey, man, there's a lot of uh, people asking about reparations. And then Donald Trump Jr. went into this whole, I don't know, I don't, California, I don't know what they're doing in California. And whoop-de-whoop. -whoop, and my family immigrated here in, in the 1900s. So why, why should my family have to pay? And academics wasn't checking that because acad ap academics is, you know, and I've talked to academics about this. Academics is not even qualified for reparations. And I don't, and deep down, he doesn't really want reparations for us because they can't get onto it. I've talked to academics face to face about this. And I don't like when people who are not a part of our lineage speak on things that's about our lineage. That, that you know, there's so many of us who can articulate the thing better. We can check some of the pushback that people give, some of the weak pushback. You know, these politicians, I want y'all to notice something. The right wingers and the left wingers, they make a point to get around only black people who they didn't cherry pick, who they know it will not give them pushback. Uh, Donald Trump was out there in um, Atlanta and it was the, uh, the whole vibe was, oh, look at how the black people out here love me. Oh, the black people love me. Well, the thing is, found out that 
some of those black people who was hugging all up on them, they're from like these little conservative think tanks where they done cherry pick some black conservatives. So that was, you know, that was orchestrated and, you know, it was like a little finesse. Same thing as the Democrats. The Democrats do the same thing. They get their cherry picked, hand picked Negroes to sit there and prop them up. And eat fish sandwiches with them and all that stuff. But they make sure not to get around black folks like us. We're going to put that ass to the fire. Proverbially, we're going to start asking questions. We're going to push back. So they're never around black folks like us. When they start talking about, oh, my, my family came here after slavery was over, man. See, we know how to check that. We know how to let them know, hey, your family came over here because there was a country that was built from the wealth of free foundational black American labor. So your family came over here specifically to benefit from that wealth. That's why they got their little broke asses over here. Yeah, we, we, we know not to let folks off the hook when they try to worm around and talk about what they should and shouldn't owe. No, no, no. You came over and you became a part of a crime family. The U.S. government operated as a crime syndicate. They're complicit and they owe. And you wanted to be a part of their government, so you're just as complicit. I don't want to hear about these individual stories about who great-grandma came, when, and where. No. We're owed by the United States government which is a government that is still here and still under the same constitution that it was under slavery. So when people start, again, getting into these deflective arguments, well, every every society had slavery, well, go deal with them. You go deal with them. Go holler at them about it. We're dealing with the nation that enslaved us and deprived us of resources generationally and maldistributed those resources and lock them in racially you see so we're not gonna play these little weird games so we got to know how to start checking folks on this stuff and the democrats they they, they do the same thing then they're no better again i'm nonpartisan. i'm not for any political group and that's another thing we got to watch out family in our circles we have a lot of people cosplaying as if they're down for the cause, down for the grassroots. There are a lot of Democratic shields hanging around these circles out here, these delineation circles. Let's be real. A lot of these folks pretend to be grassroots, but they're secretly working with Democratic think tanks. And they're just as vicious as some of the the most virulent right-wingers that you can imagine. The left-wing think tanks hate Black people more than the right-wingers. They really do. They send tethers among us to spread lies, to sow dissension, to undermine movements, family. The, some of the stuff that we've been doing me personally, some of the events and stuff we've been putting together. Well, the Democrats, they've had ops under me doing little weird shit. They're out there, man. We got a lot of ops out here who are Democratic shills. You see? And they'll sit there and act like they're grassroots. They'll talk grassroots for a minute and then all of a sudden start telling people to vote down Democrats. Huh? You think? That's Oppie. We got to watch everybody. It's real out here. Now, family, we, we're getting this thing organized for the rally for reparations. You're about to see a lot of these ops pop back up. And they're already buzzing and circling around the minute we start talking about the... Um, Juneteenth rally for reparations. Some of these ops start started popping their heads back up. So we got to watch out for that. And also, family, we got a GoFundMe. We just we're gonna launch. Well, we we pretty much got it together. We got to go fund me for the um, 
the June 15th event because I realized because we're not we're not making any profit off that thing whatsoever because it's free to get there. It's free to come through. Um, and the Washington, D.C., they're not letting us have vendors there. So there's not going to be a profit made. So we, we got to have more community engagement because I, I can't keep fitting all, putting all these bills, putting all this stuff together for the, the production and the security. It's a lot for one person. I, I'm, I just can't keep doing it over and over as one person. I definitely need more community backing and we got to just really get a budget. I was trying to avoid having to do that last time. You know, I, I pretty much foot the bill for everything. And, you know, this is for the community, man. I want us to just everybody be on code and us to be on the same page. And a lot of times when events like this pop off, there's some kind of corporate sponsor somewhere, but there is none. There is no corporate sponsor nowhere. We don't have it. So we we, we got to get more community engagement. So we got to go fund me that we need everybody to pitch in on so that we can kind of make this thing a little smoother, make it pop off in order for us to have, make it happen. Because if we don't get this budget like we need to get it, we just won't be able to have it. Because I, I got way too much stuff going on because I'm in the middle of promoting this movie and traveling around really the world. We're going to be going overseas, promoting the movie and getting that together. But the rally for reparations is something that the community needs big time because we need to keep beating the drum of tangibles and what we need to get as far as our lineage. We really, really need to keep that going. And I want us to be in the mindset of just all getting on code and just making sure that um, we get the, the messaging out there. So I keep everybody posted on the, the GoFundMe. When, uh, when I post this up on my YouTube channel, this will be on my YouTube channel later on, there will be a GoFundMe link so everybody can just go there and, um, you know, be a part of it. Um other than that, man, again, the um, speaking of microphone check, I really want y'all to check that out because, you know, this is a part of us getting on code, too, because them trying to erase a lot of our culture, we, we got to stop that nonsense from happening, man. We really got to stop that because when they start erasing people's culture, they start erasing the people. They That's a way to start setting the stage for genocide. When they want to commit genocide, man, the first thing they do is start erasing a people's culture. They start acting like they don't exist society, societally. From a societal standpoint, that's what I mean. Um, because remember, Kamala Harris, when um, she was talking about, they had like a little hip hop party or wherever they had it. They were talking about hip hop recently. And she was talking about, yeah, hip hop came from African rhythm, rhythms and Caribbeans and Latinos. And like, we didn't even damn exist. There's a documentary out now that's on Amazon Prime that just came out a couple of days later talking about hip hop world where they're talking all of that Jamaica bullshit and they got DJ Khaled and all of these non FBAs they're parading around. So they are actively trying to erase us from a culture that we 100% created. And it's very important to shut all that stuff down. That's not some like a little throwaway thing. That's very significant. We got to start shutting that stuff down. We did. And, you know, we got to stop being afraid of checking these people for their lies. And we got to start checking these tethers, these lying, scheming tethers who are coming among us. Yeah. I just saw a, t a couple of tweets from some non-FBA tethers talking about how much they love white people and how we can't have black-run countries because they they come from countries that that's an example of how a black-run country ends up and it's a failure and we need white folks. I mean, these are tethers saying this stuff. Tethers are just being open about their not only self-hate, but their hate for anything black. We have a lot of tethers saying this type of stuff because they come from these failed homelands and they see black faces on the failure. So they try to project that onto everybody. And then they come among us with that defeatist mindset. 
you see. So we have to check all that, especially young black people. They don't need to internalize some of that tether self-hate that they try to project on us. We got to check everything. Because we as foundational black Americans, we when we try to get things popping on our own, when we're on our own, we actually do much better. We actually get things popping without the white supremacists in our mix. We think way differently. We as foundational black Americans, we understand that we actually thrive better when they're not in our mix. That's why when we have places like Tulsa, see, a lot of folks... The tether class can't really wrap their minds around the concept of a Tulsa. And there were many, quote unquote, Tulsas in Black Wall Streets. Tulsa was the most famous one because the way they destroyed it. We had prosperous areas like that all over the country when we were left a damn alone. We got to understand ghettos were created by the white supremacists. That was created by them. When they saw how prosperous we are, they they started sabotaging our prosperous areas. They started throwing a wrench in our prosperity. We're the only group whose prosperity is a threat. They got to throw a wrench in it. And they did this all over the country where they, we have a prosperous area, then they build a freeway over it and and then talk about some urban renewal and say, hey, we got to do eminent domain, just like they did in Bruce's Beach. Beautiful area. We had a place over there popping, a beautiful beachfront area. They came in. Whoops. Eminent domain. We got to take it. We had Central Park. Whoops. Eminent domain. We got to take it. Got to do some urban renewal. So what we're going to do is put y'all in the projects for, for a few years until we figure out where else you can go. And then, bam, here we are. So we got to understand how a lot of stuff has been orchestrated against us because they understand that we can fare well by ourselves. We can do very well by ourselves when they're out of our mix. And we've proven that over and over again. When the white supremacists are not in our damn business, we actually do a little something. That goes back to hip hop. Look at the story of hip hop, man. Hip hop was basically the foundation of black Americans migrated to the north. We had Harlem popping. We had our culture popping. Then they started the systematic deprivation. You had them slum lords burning up buildings up there, creating slums. I want y'all to understand the stuff we saw in the Bronx in the 70s, it was the white people doing that. The white landlords up there finessing the insurance companies, burning out places. Um, and draining the resources away from the community. So black people are just stuck out there by themselves. So they said, hey, you know what? It's a lot of crime. It's a lot of junkies out here, man. We don't want to get into that. Let's create somewhere we can stay away from those junkies. We can stay out the streets. They don't have any music programs for us no more. Well, look, get your mama's, get two copies of your mama's record. Let's get some turntables. Let's get that mic and let's do something on our own. Let's create a different culture where we have our own rules. And then they birth one of the most influential cultures in um, modern history, which is hip hop. And that's the foundation of black American culture. And the minute it became successful, all of a sudden they wanted to give it to somebody else. Well, Caribbeans, Puerto Ricans. So we're not going, we're not playing that game. We're not playing that game at all. We are not playing that game. And we're standing on all of our business. We're going to get calls in a minute. We got a lot of people in here. We got a lot of people in here. Shout out to everybody in here. While I'm talking, everybody need to get their tickets to Microphone Check at microphonecheck.com. <clears throat> Tell me, y'all know they've O.J. Simpson. How long has O.J. Simpson been dead? A week? O.J. Simpson died a week ago. They're still... Well, they're still on TV running their mouth about OJ. They're trying to finesse this man even from his grave. They they didn't cremated OJ. They were talking about getting his brain and studying his brain. They were gonna they were talking about giving OJ the Nat Turner treatment. You know. They are still talking about um 
getting money from his estate and all of this stuff, they are, they're still sore behind OJ. They're still whining behind OJ. They're still hopping on TV. Oh, this man got away with murder. And the black community knows he did it. I keep hearing that narrative. Y'all notice that narrative keeps floating around. You got these white pundits who keeps getting on TV talking about, yeah, black people, they know that OJ was guilty, but they just wanted to get some revenge because of Rodney King. They just wanted revenge. These are white people saying this. When Bill Maher, when did they become our spokespersons? When did these people become the spokespersons for us? That wasn't about no revenge. Where, where, we got white people in here. Let me talk to you guys. The OJ trial and the correct verdict of innocence wasn't about revenge. Let me tell you something. We had already gotten our lick back for Rodney King. We got our lick back with the riots. So nobody was itching for revenge. We got our lick back. That billion dollar bill that we gave to the city of Los Angeles, we got our lick back. So we weren't really thinking about revenge. The dominant society, they wanted revenge because of that billion dollar bill for the Rodney King situation. They, they thought they were going to be slick and the city turned up and those four white cops or however many it was that ended up costing the city over a billion dollars and dozens of lives lost. So that was a hefty price to pay for white supremacy. The bill for white supremacy was real high, so they were very upset by that. And they were going to use OJ as revenge for us. And that backfired. Like I said, family, and I'm, I'm going to keep saying this, people in the dominant white society, they know good and well that OJ Simpson didn't murder nobody. They know that. But I want y'all to understand the climate in the early 1990s. I want y'all to understand the climate then. I want you to understand the climate. At that time, the early 90s, black people correctly in that, that case did the right thing because y'all were, how many of you guys are old enough to remember in the early 90s? It was very popular for suspected white supremacists to commit crimes and then pin the crimes on black people. That was a thing in the early 90s. How many of y'all remember Susan Smith? Raise your hand if you remember Susan Smith. An, an infamous case. Some of y'all might not be old enough to remember. This was the same time as the uh, murder of uh, Ron and Nicole. Same exact time. Same uh, 1994. Is a white woman who drowned her children. This old crazy, demented white woman went and drowned her children in a river, locked them in a car and pushed the car in the river and drowned her kids and then got out here fake crying talking about a black man kidnapped her kids and drowned her kids. That was in 1994. Out there blaming a brother. A few years earlier, there was a dude, Chuck Stewart, in Boston, where my Boston people, he did something similar. He shot his pregnant wife and then I think he shot himself and then said a black person did it. And in the city of Boston, they were rounding up black people left and right out there. They were gaffling brothers up because of this white man's lies. Around the time of Jeffrey Dahmer, a couple of years earlier. Um, remember, Jeffrey Dahmer got killed in jail and it was another dude who got killed too. It was another white man who was in jail with Dahmer. The white man was in jail because he killed some people and then lied and said black people did it. That's why the brother who killed Dahmer killed his ass, too. That was a common thing for them to commit crimes on each other and then say that a black person did it. Same thing with O.J. The O.J. situation was white on white crime. That was white on white crime. The white people killing other white people. But they weren't going to get any mileage out of that. So they wanted to pin it on a black person. And who more convenient than to pin it on OJ? Ain't no good and well OJ didn't commit those crimes. And also another thing that was popular at that time, family, that super predator narrative was real popular. That's when that got started. That got started around 94, 95. The white media started parading these stories around about black super predators. Y'all remember that video of 
um, Hillary Clinton back in the 90s talking about black people being super predators. Y'all remember that? That was the thing back then where white society was making it seem like black people have some kind of superhuman criminal strength when we go out here just lurking around trying to find white people to harm. That was a thing, that old super predator narrative. And that tied into the OJ trial because listen to listen to some of the nonsensical things they were saying about OJ. They were talking about, yeah, the gloves didn't fit OJ because his hands grew bigger. Remember? Yeah, he wasn't taking arthritis medicine, so his hands grew like the like the incredible Hulk. He was a super nigga, super predator. He he can shape shift and his hands got big. Just ridiculous ass nonsense. The white supremacists were just saying any damn thing. You know, he became, OJ was the damn incredible Hulk. His body got bigger, his head got bigger. Ooh, I got to kill some white people. So, shut up. And and Negroes know better. When I see a Negro sitting up here talking about, I do, OJ might have did it. Think, shut your dumb ass up. That's a Negro trying to get a job or a promotion from white people. That's why the, the main people we see talking that are the, the Tether Sambos or the Moist Sambos, Stephen A. Smith or the Moist Lamont Hills, people who are trying to get a damn job somewhere. Y'all know good and well OJ didn't do no nonsense like that. And because white people know he didn't do it. But I digress. Oh, man, let me get some calls because we do have a lot of people in the building. We got a lot of people in the building. Let's get um, Steve for real estate. All right. Let's get Steve for real estate in the building. All right. Steve, what's up, brother? Hey, Steve. I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Tariq, brother, um, we need to bring microphone check to Kansas City. We need to bring it to Kansas City. It ain't on your list, brother. I, I need to want to help. Let me help. You mean, yeah, it's it, it's a done deal, man. We pretty much it's you know it is what it is. Y'all got to go to one of the cities that's it's close by, but or you got to wait for the Blu-ray to come out on Amazon or something. All right, Mister, let's get up. Let's get breakfast first. Then I get Mister AI breakfast. Hey, Tariq, how are you? How have you been? I'm good. Breakfast. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing better. Um, yeah, like, uh, you know, like these Democrats, man, they're the real racist. Yeah. Yeah. And, but anyways, um, dude, are you free next Thursday? This coming Thursday? What's happening next Thursday? Dude, there's like a huge space and we'd love to have you on the space, dude. Whose space is it? It's your friend, Paul Allen. Yeah, it's not going to be huge because he doesn't have that many listeners. So y'all, well, they also stream on Cozy TV. Do you know Cozy TV? Um, no, I'm not familiar with that. But you he know, doesn't. He doesn't have the many followers. So what you guys like to do? Y'all like to well, hold on. chase on black people? No, no, no. But do you know yeah, Cozy yeah. TV? It's Nick Fuentes's platform. Yeah, I. You heard of Nick, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's going to be on his platform. So it's a pretty big audience there. It's like four, four to 500 people there and like 200 people in the space. So about like six to 700 people. Like it's pretty decent size. Yeah, man, and it's like whatever. I got that right now. So, Dude, you know. come on, man. It'll be fun. Yo, yo, no, y'all want to clout chase. Y'all white supremacists always trying to clout chase off us. Man, y'all love to try to clout chase off us. I'm not trying to give y'all no clout. The Iron Mike, hop on, man. What you've been tweeting some real weird stuff. You were tweeting some lie about me. What was that lie you were tweeting about me? You said I said some about you. What'd you say, dude? It was a real moist ass lie you tweeted. The Iron Mike, what'd you say? You you tweeted something. And you keep tweeting something about me talking about you or some some weird ho ass shit you're saying. Iron Mike, hop on, man. Oh yeah. Um, we we're not even on that right now. Just yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we are. No, no, no. We are on that. No, 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 no. no, 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 no we no, are. I just want to give you your props on the documentary no, straight up. Let's, like, no, no, no. Don't give me props. Awesome, and then you, brother. All right, but don't give me props and you're tweeting weird shit. Like I'm talking about you. What's that about? Man, I, I don't. Man, I don't know. Man, just oh, okay. That listen, means listen, niggas, listen, niggas, niggas, niggas trolling for attention. All right, that's what I thought. Get you out of here. 
He's t- he be tweeting some weird shit. Like, Tariq be talking about me. What? What the fuck is you talking about, nigga? I don't know you. Mr. AI, hop on, brother. Hey, what's going on, brother Tariq? How you doing this evening? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Oh, nothing. But um, when I want to ask you about the O.J. Simpson trial, did you... Yes. Um, Cora Fishman, remember her? She was um Nicole Brown Simpson's best friend. Did she ever testify during the um during the criminal case? Because I know she testified in the um civil court case. And one other thing I want to tell you about that nobody doesn't know about this, but after OJ Simpson got acquitted, Gerardo Rivera, um, when he was on CNBC, was trying to push for O.J. Simpson to get arrested with, with you know, with petty um, tax evasions, what, what not. They were trying to do a RICO charge on O.J. Simpson for, like, ever since he got a, um, acquitted from that first trial. So oh, I yeah. want to lay my, ch- my um, plane on that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they were desperate. And they, were, they, they ended up getting him in jail for stealing his own stuff. They were trying. The white supremacists are very vengeful. They were trying to get revenge on him. And here's the thing. By the time they got him in jail in, um, in Vegas, um, the white supremacists didn't get what they wanted out of it. And our, our good brother, Professor Black Truth, touched on this. Uh, by that time, black people weren't even tripping on it no more. Um, also... It was a new generation. This was like 20 years after the fact. So it was a new generation. So this new generation wasn't, it, it, it didn't have an impact. So when they got him in jail in Vegas, black society was like, man. And the white supremacists didn't get that little sadistic satisfaction of getting black people upset. Because see, white supremacist culture is all about getting black folks upset. That's that's a major part of their culture. They live to trigger us, to get us emotional, to have us upset, to have us crying and begging and pleading. And they, they it's a sick little sadistic thing they get out of that. So that's why they like to do these unjust cases of a, a, a race or kill the black person or a black child. They let them off because they know that black society will be upset. They just get off on that. You know, that's a real power trip to have us triggered and not knowing what to do because they got the entire system rigged. You know, they they start skinning and grinning until people start getting on some maroon energy and start hitting the streets and get into guerrilla warfare. Then they're like, oh, my God, what's wrong with these people? Then they start trying to gaslight. But yeah, they didn't get the the sadistic satisfaction that they wanted. So it was like a a, a bittersweet thing putting OJ in jail because nobody black society didn't really care because black society was like, hey man, OJ should have been sitting his ass down somewhere. OJ let himself get set up by the white people because they set him up. It was the white folks who basically his white friends set him up. You know, they all they're wearing wires and all of this shit. They had recording equipment. They the ones who set it up. They got immunity. So, yeah, we're like, nigga, uh, you should have known better. So we weren't even triggered by that. You see. Again, the name of the game is for them to to trigger us, to get us upset. North, what's up, man? Uh, I'll run to Sussy, brother. My um, man. I, I just had a question about, like, uh, what's been the talk of the town on the Twitter streets. Is uh, did, did you see that Creole woman that went viral? Um. Oh yeah, I, th- I heard about it. I heard about it. Yeah, because everybody's debating if she's black or not, and I know a lot of people are trying to sneak into the reparations conversation. Uh, these white people. So I'm trying to get your opinion and like, what do you think her racial makeup is? Well, I, I have to see it because I keep hearing about it, and I think I've seen a screenshot of it. So I have to. Um, I got to watch the video now. What's your background? People are texting me now saying that you're non-FBA. Where are you from, bro? Uh, I'm, I'm a nigga from Eastside Compton. Well, why are they saying you're not FBA? They said you're a Pan-Africanist. Oh, okay. So Pan-African isn't an ethnicity. I know. I know. But yeah, I'm, I'm a black American. Okay. And you, um, do you think that, you know, we should go to Africa and move to Africa and all this stuff? Um, if black people want to move to Africa, I think it's, it's fine. There's really no issue. You shouldn't have to do what you don't want to do. Right. Right. So uh, do you plan, do you personally, you plan on moving to Africa? 
Um, I don't, I don't believe in the concept of borders. Uh, I'll, I'll be where I be. Right. Because I see you got. I'm looking at your profile. You got a lot of flags on there. No, that that's to troll y'all because like y'all always say like I'm an immigrant because I believe uh, black people are black people. Okay. I, I believe black people are black people too, but you know, there's different ethnicities of black people, just like there's different ethnicities of white people. So, all right. Yeah. All right. All right, guy. He's trolling us by putting a bunch of flags up. Right, people are giving a thumbs down. Let's get Roger. Let's get Roger in here. Let's get Mr. Roger. What's going on, Tariq? How you doing, brother? I'm good, Roger. How are you? Doing good, man. I just wanted to call in and give you your shout outs, give you props, because, you know, you do a lot for our community, man. You always put in work, and I just, you know, just truly respect it, bro. Um, yes, sir. Last year, I was watching uh, the MAGA lessons, just getting some game, and I just appreciate how you always told the men to, you know, just always put yourself in a financial position, you know, that's favorable. Yeah. So, you know, I got motivated. End up uh, enrolling in flight school, and yesterday I just became a certified pilot. So I just want to thank you for that. <laughs> That's fly, man! Congratulations. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, my brother. So just you know, just keep doing your thing, man. Keep motivating the people. You know, we really appreciate it. Um, I'm always down at the museum. I was just there this past weekend. Great event, okay. brother. Just keep doing your thing, man. Just yes, want to give you a shout out. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate sure. it, man. We had a great time last Saturday, man. Man, we had a ball last Saturday. It was packed in there too. The comedians were hilarious. We had a ball in there Saturday. The food was good. The and, and, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to stop all the damn drinks like that because we're going to have to limit the drinks. I'm going to let y'all know that now because usually, you know, people come in, we just kind of have an open bar for everybody. I'm gonna, I got to limit that because you know, people are getting a little drunk and drinking too damn much. So we're going to... I know we're going to have some, some events will have complimentary drinks, but we're going to limit it to like a couple of drinks per person so that people ain't going crazy because yeah, people were getting a little, you know, a little too drunk. Um, what's your name? Holocaust somebody. Yo, what's up Tariq? I was just wondering if you would come on, uh, my friend Paul Allen's show, no holds barred. Okay. Didn't you hear the other guy who just asked that? Look, I mean, it's a big show. We got like 800 viewers and stuff. So I think you why, why would you ask me some shit and not just address that? What the fuck is that about? Because it's a big show. We get like 800 viewers and stuff. I just told the dude I'm not really rocking with y'all like that. I'm not trying to give y'all clout. Look, it's like a big platform. You could grow like your it ain't your that big because y'all trying to get clout off Black Daddy. Why y'all <laughs> coming to Black Daddy for clout? All right. All right. All right. I got another question. Y'all, 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 y'all leave Black Daddy alone. Black another Daddy question. said no. Listen, Black Daddy says no. And I go to your room. Okay, I got another question. question. Give me another question. Y'all listen to Black Daddy now. What's the other question? Do you differentiate uh, white people and Jews? Do you differentiate? They're black Jews. So But um like white Jews, do you differentiate? Right, okay, you just hit it. White Jews. So white, what's the difference no, but, between a white Jew and a white Christian? But they're not white though. You just said they Based were. Based on DNA. You just said they were white Jews, and I agree. No, but like, if, they have white skin, but they're not white. Um, no, then define what a white person is. Like, from Europe. White they're from Europe. Europe. They're from Europe. The Ashkenazis no, they're not. are from Europe. Yes, they are. The Ashkenazis not from Europe. are from Europe. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Where are they from? They're from, like, the Levant. That's not Europe. They're from where? The Levant. Not Europe. The Middle East. Define the Middle East, because y'all play these little word games. Where where is Israel? Why Israel would they looks, want? Why would Israel be their homeland if they were not from there? Well, yeah, they they kind of needed a place to go, so they designated that place. But who why? said they were? From why there? did they designate that place specifically? Now there were the original ones according to history, coming out of Israel, the Israelites were black. That's what the black Israelites have been saying. So why is there no black people in Israel? Because the white supremacists have expelled a lot of them. But they're not white, though. But why the, 
their court cases from black Jewish people claiming that they're dealing with white supremacy in Israel. Why are they saying that? Who says that? Who says who is there are lawsuits, that? sir? There are do y'all know their black Jews have several lawsuits of discrimination in Israel? But why 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 they're not white? But so why are they complaining about white supremacy over there? I'm not sure, but because they're not white. Why would they be complaining it? Why would they be complaining about white supremacy if they were white? I'm talking about the black Jews. But if they were if they were Jews, why would they be complaining about white supremacy if Jews are white, according to you? Because the black Jews are being discriminated against by white Jews. And why are there white supremacist groups in Israel? What sort of white supremacist groups are in Israel? Patrol 26, I mean 36. There's a white supremacist group called Patrol 36 in Israel. It's a well-known white supremacist so, group. So why are Jews like Noel Ignatov calling for the death of white people if he is not white? Um, uh, there might be a lot of self-hating people within that uh, community. We have Jesse. We have Jesse Lee Peterson. We have Jesse Lee Peterson who don't like black people. He's black. So what do you think? But how does Jesse Lee Peterson hate black people? Oh, have you heard him? What does he say about black people that is hating? Everything. Hell, Candace Owens. Candace Owens ain't she black? How does Candace Owens hate black people? Candace Owens says she hates everything about black culture. She doesn't want no part of black culture. She said that explicitly. So you think so black culture difference? is good? Um, yes, it is. Black In culture what way? is phenomenal. Foundational black American culture is. In what way? Because we're the we have iconic people who are recognized internationally. We have iconic heroes that are recognized internationally. So and, so do white you, people. They have internationally who? recognized people. So they're Re- people, heroes. Right? Name your name your heroes who's internationally I mean, recognized and respected. I mean, Christopher Columbus. He's a nationally uh, recognized hero. Uh, stop. <laughs> if you don't stop, name name your <laughs> cultural heroes are all degenerates. Columbus was a raping, genocidal gen- degenerate, sir. Black people don't rape people, Tariq. Yeah, but we don't we don't praise them though. We don't pra- we praise the ones who are not genocidal and rapey. <laughs> See, that's the difference with us. See, you guys praise your degenerates, like Kyle Rittenhouse. We don't we don't parade killers on college campuses. Black people don't parade killers, Tariq. No, we don't. No, we don't. Who? We what don't. killers do we bring to you college? Never campus? paraded a killer. No, who do we parade around? You were just talking about O.J. Simpson, like two minutes. Who's ago. very innocent? O.J.'s innocent. Oh, he was innocent. Oh, okay. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. O.J. didn't right. kill nobody. Thank you. Glad to hear it. Uh huh. You what? You think O.J. killed somebody? Oh, I'm sure he's innocent. All right. No, no, no. Let's bring the logistics because when it comes to I mean, the logistics, like, y'all DNA start evidence. trolling. I mean, like, who, you, you who mean who the one that your white supremacist brethren wife? planted? The Who one the, the evidence your white supremacist own wife. Your, your white supremacist brethren planted the evidence. Yeah. What about it? Go what ahead. about her Jewish boyfriend? Is he white? Who what Jewish boyfriend? What are you talking about? The Jewish, like his his wife was hooking up with the Jewish guys. He white. She was hooking up with everybody. She was a, she was neighborhood um booty, dude. Nobody was tripping on her. He wasn't no, but, killing her. But the guy she was hooking up with is Jewish. Is he white? Who cares? She was hooking up with everybody. No, that kind of matters, don't you think, Tariq? No, it doesn't like... matter. What does that have to do with other white people killing her? She got killed by some drug dealers, allegedly. OJ didn't no, kill her. No, no, no. Allegedly, OJ killed her, but... No, he didn't. Find That's out. why he was found innocent. OJ didn't kill her. How did allegedly, OJ kill her? Allegedly, OJ killed her, but they found him innocent. So How did OJ kill her? How, how, how did OJ kill, kill her? her? How did OJ kill two people with a knife and didn't get no I bruises? mean, the DNA evidence that was found on the glove and the knife, that, that was planted by a white supremacist. With? That was planted by a white supremacist who pled, who got on the stand and then pled the fifth when asked if he planted it. Huh? What about the glove that didn't fit because he didn't take his arthritis medicine? So he was the, he was super nigga. What? You're saying that he turned into super nigga, the Incredible Hulk super nigga. His hands grew. His Is hands that- swole because he didn't take his. That's medicine? super nigga talk. 
that's super nigga talk. That that's unrealistic. That's white supremacist no. fantasy. I think talk. your hands would swell up if his, you didn't no. take your okay. medicine. Using that flaw. Okay, up. using okay. If his arthritis was was that bad, where his hands are swelling up, then he couldn't have committed the murder. Then he, I think he, if anybody didn't how take did he commit the murder? Medicine. Their hands. How could swell he up. commit murder if his arthritis is so bad? His hands are swelling that up. Does, like that's blood. irrelevant to the fact. No, that it's not irrelevant. Hands, that's relevant, sir. If he's the that gloves didn't fit with arthritis, he was he, if he was that, the gloves could have fit. If, while no, he was, sir, stop it. If he was that inflicted with arthritis to the point where his hands are growing out of pain, he couldn't have committed you no know, murder like that—a double murder against a guy half his age and way more in shape what are you talking about make it make sense my friend turn your microphone back on tell me more about the super nigga hand growth like he's the incredible hulk the gloves didn't fit while he was at trial what makes that make how does that because make it wasn't that his gloves while he murdered him it was murdered it her. wasn't his gloves that's why they weren't his gloves no they weren't Oh, That's okay. why they didn't fit. Great. His hands didn't grow. Stop that. Y'all white supremacists say anything. Okay, Tariq, can you explain why you don't differentiate between white people and Jews? What's up with that? I just explained. They're black Jews. So what are you talking about? <laughs> there are not black Jews. What the hell you think is in Ethiopia? You, there are black Jews. There's like a few black Jews, that doesn't mean there are black Jews. They're mostly, mostly okay, good, they good. mostly you, have you, white skin. Okay, you're contradicting yourself. He said they're black Jews, but that don't mean they're black Jews. Okay, get off the phone, sir. You've run out of material. The white supremacists are not as bright as you think they are, family. The white supremacists, as you see, they're not as bright as you think they are. All right, Saul, hop on, Saul. And that's why I don't want to. I don't want to go on your, your homeboy's platform if that's the kind of logic you're bringing. You, you guys are too easy to debunk. Saul, hop on. Hi. What's up, Saul? Um, I really, I really need some advice. I'm dealing with something kind of serious, and I really wanted your perspective. Yeah, is it is, is it head lice? Because there's a cream you can get at Walgreens. Um, you have to leave it on your skin. I'm black. You, you, you're black. Yes, I'm black. I don't believe that, ma'am. Uh, okay, okay, let me ask uh, you. I'm you're black. You're black. Okay. Uh, what do you put? Yes, I'm okay, black. Okay. What What do you put on? How do you season chicken? What product do you use to season chicken? Um, I season all my meat with lard okay. or or garlic salt, um, onion powder, some. It depends. I, I usually just season steak and chicken with lari because uh -huh. it's like all in one. Okay. Or and pepper and black pepper. Okay. Um. What? How many cups of sugar do you put in the average pitcher of Kool Aid? <laughs> uh, I don't drink Kool Aid. Okay, you ain't black. Uh, man, where are you from? For real? I did when I was little, but I don't drink it now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so where are you from? Because you can't be no foundation. New York City. Where's your family? I am. My my mom is FBA. Where's your dad from? Uh, he's. Uh, I, I I don't know. I don't really know where he's from. Your I don't have a relationship. Your, your with mama him. didn't tell you. Yes. Uh, he's like racially ambiguous. He's not black though, but. He's like his mom is white, but I don't know what his dad his, is. His, he's not black. No, I've met him before. I last met him when I was really young. So did your mom? Uh, so I mean, but you did not know anything about him. Was it a trick she called or something? How you don't know about him? No, she. Uh, I met him. I've met him a few times. He used to be in my life, but um, huh? he was from what my mom told me. She he was abusive. Mm -hmm. And um, he was into drugs. Uh, um, she's uh, was on drugs. schizophrenic. She was on drugs too. If she was fucking with him, if and she don't know that much about him, and then tell you she was on drugs, right? Uh, she's schizophrenic. And she was on drugs too. A lot of schizophrenic people are on. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm I mean, I've never up. seen I'm her. I'm just, just trying to get to you know, truth to power. Okay, so what's on your mind? What's on your mind, Absol? 
I need uh, advice um, about uh, my next door neighbor. Uh, she's a white Hispanic woman. Okay. And she's basically the definition of a welfare queen. She's a hood rat. She's violent. Um, she has three kids. And uh, it's, it's sort of a long story because it's been going because this has been How's going on for you? many years. How about you? Let's get, come on, God damn it. Let's get to the point. How is she bothering you? Um, I, she used to vandalize my door, my apartment door, and I had to get a security camera a few months ago. I got a ring camera. Okay. And the reporter to the man, ma'am. This is this is okay. Come on now. This is some simple shit. All right. Thank you. I don't know what that's about. I don't. You know, if your neighbor's doing something, do you report it to the 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 apartment manager, or get her section eight revoked or something? Um, what's your name, man? I don't know what your name is. Um, six. Hey, what's up? What's up, six? Uh, it's S. It's S. S. Okay. There you go. What's up, S? Uh, I have I have two questions. Go ahead, S. So, I was gonna ask if you would come on the show No Holds Barred with my uh, my friend Paul Allen. They get they'll give you time to speak. And... Okay, let's get Chadical. All right, Chad, what's up, man? You want to get on? Chadical, what's up, man? Afternoon. How you doing, Tariq? Can you I'm hear good. me, by the way? I'm on I can hear you, man. Headphones. Get, get those, you got some headsets on. Get those off, brother. Give me get one them. second. I, I'll come back up in 30 seconds. Okay. Well, while you, while I'm waiting on that, let's get Auntie G. We get Auntie G in here. All right. All right. Auntie G. Hey, Tariq. How you doing? I've never been up here before. What an honor. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. My pleasure. Where are you from, Auntie G? Well, I'm from all over. I'm up in Michigan right now, though. Don't tell anybody. A lot of people want to try to find me, though, sir. Uh-oh. What do they want to do to you, Auntie G? Well, I'm kinda, I am kind of clip people and catch them in bad places, so a lot of people want to skin my hide. Stealth virologist is really after me, though. Don't tell them I'm up here, though, sir. There you go. So what's on your mind, ma'am? Oh, nothing. I just came up here. I'm hanging with all you guys. I'm learning. You guys are all teaching me so much stuff. I, I just, I know you've been asked before, sir, and I'm being re really, really respectful. Mr. Paul Allen, I'd love you to come on the, his show. You could really class it up, I bet. Right, Chattical? I bet he could really class it up and, and really do some wonders on there, don't you think, Chattical? Yeah, um, I, I think it would be an interesting time to have Tariq come on. Um, and I just wanted to correct the record. Um, you said that they don't have many people on. They had about 700 concurrent viewers today um, across the two platforms that they were streaming on. So it they could be a good $2, opportunity. For, they yeah, almost made two thousand so, dollars in donation, Tariq. Yeah. So there's a so, lot of so, rich white people. If y'all got it going on so bad, why y'all uh, uh, y'all calling well, black? Why y'all black? Well, here's the reason why, Tariq. It's because Paul Allen likes you a lot. He says that you're his favorite black person on this app. Um, he speaks your praises all the time. He did it on the space today. I'm sure Auntie could clip it for you. You can't keep begging black daddy. Black daddy. I don't want to deal with the white supremacist stepchildren right now. All right. The white supremacist stepchildren, they have to go somewhere and play. Black Daddy can't give you the clout you need. All right. They're begging Black Daddy. All right. They're really, really begging Black Daddy for some attention. And I get it. You know, y'all you know, want some of the shine and that Majora spirit. You know, I got the spirit of Majora. And, you know, y'all want to glom on to some of that Majora spirit that, you know, that foundational black American energy that black daddy has and the other black family. I, I get it. But black daddy says no. Um, I don't know what your name is, brother. Um, Elish Gaper. Hey, Elish. I was a little confused. So you were saying you like OJ? Um. Not about liking OJ. OJ is 100% innocent. It's not about liking Well, that's where, that's where I'm confused. Because I like him if he's guilty. So Why? We're, like, we're running into a, you know, a little problem here. I think he was cooler if he killed her. 
Why why would that be cool? That's not cool. Why would that be cool? Because she was probably annoying as shit. Like, didn't she divorce him or something? Yeah, yeah they got divorced, but... Yeah, you know, the, bro. Him killing her, god Come damn. You white supremacists are very demonic, man. Not really, no. bro. I, yes, think you, I, no, thought you would under, no, I thought what? we would be on the same page here. No, no, this is the Cal Rittenhouse mindset. You guys are... Lord, see, we that's not a part of our culture. We don't celebrate people who go around killing people. We don't do that. And our, our innocent brother OJ, rest in peace. He didn't kill anybody. He's innocent. Boy, you guys are very demonic. Um, let me see. We got a lot of folks. Let's get um uh who is this? NT. Let's get NT in the building. NT hop in. Yo, what's happening, Tariq? What's up, NT? How are you? Yeah, yeah, what's up? Uh so I mean, I, I know some of y'all about to click on my page and see the flag, Sierra Leone. So I want to talk yeah. about some Sierra Leoneans. Um, and, you know, reading up on my history and people, it's like, yo, we could really claim reparations. So I right, hey, pull it up right here. Sierra Leonean Americans are an ethnic group of Americans full of partial Sierra, uh, Sierra Leonean ancestry. This includes Sierra Leone Creoles, whose ancestors were African-American black loyalists freed after fighting on their side, British during the American Revolutionary War. Some mm. African Americans traced their roots to Indonesia's enslaved Sierra Leoneans, exported to the United States between 18th and early 19th century. In particular, the Gula people. Mm -hmm. So, you need some more information on the Gula people? Okay, so you're saying that because there were some um, Black Americans who went to Sierra Leone, that you could qualify for reparations? Okay, yeah, yeah. Because right here, hold up. Damn, I had all this shit. All right, yeah, right here. Mm hmm. Actually, let me just pull it up on Google. Who qualifies for reparations? The task force voted to recommend only those individuals who are able to demonstrate that they are the descendant of a, either an enslaved African American in the United States or a free African American living in the United States prior to 1900 be eligible mm -hmm. for monetary reparations. Mm -hmm. So with that, tracing my, lin my lineage all the way back to those people, I would be able to classify for reparations. But can you classify yourself to those census forms from like 1865? I, I can I can do all that if I need to. Probably not. Probably not. I, I, I can. Also, also um, you immigrated here. Your family actually had to immigrate back here. So that disqualifies you. You became an immigrant. Wait, how does that disqualify? Because y'all left. You became an immigrant. For Wait. example, I'm going to give you an example. Wait, but we were shipped back over there. Right. Just like people say we were shipped from Africa. I can't go to Africa. I'm an immigrant if I go to Africa. I can't get any citizenship. You're not, you're not an immigrant in certain countries. Uh, yes, I am. I in can't... certain countries, you're not an immigrant. In Africa, Yes. What no. country am I not an immigrant? Uh, you go can through? go to Liberia and get... You, you're already a citizen in Liberia. No, I'm not. You got to go through a process, bro. <laughs> bro. I just can't go to Liberia and just post up. We got to go... There's a process we got to go through. The process is, like, pretty simple. I, personally, I'm not Liberian, so I don't know about the exact process, but I do know that Black Americans do have citizenship over there. Yeah, no, no. There's a lot of red tape. Okay. A lot of them are talking like Ghana talking about, hey, come home or whatever. And they don't give you real citizenship. They give you a right to abode. So there's a lot of finessing over there. So hey, I man. can't. Well, we that's, can't just, that's just in the African DNA to be finessing and shit like that. Right. But my right. main my main point was, you know, I just wanted to bring that up because it's like if I was able to trace my ancestry back to these specific people then that would not make me no type of tether or anything like that. Yes, but... it would, because you're not a freedman. See, that's the thing. You're not a freedman. You left. Your family left. Uh, Under what circumstances? Hey, circumstances happen, all right? But you're not a freedman. That's the thing. You can't get it. Because, see, that's one of the things that we're going to have to push because white supremacists are trying to figure out a way to finesse the reparations for themselves. They're trying to say, well, hell... I'm white, but my great, 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 great grandma was a slave. So they're trying to play that game. So we're going to have to make sure that people who are currently designated as freedmen 
are the ones who are going to be qualified today. You understand? And you're not a freedman. You don't come from that that lineage. You weren't freed, you see. You, you immigrated. You see, your family immigrated back over here, so you're not qualified. There are Black people who um, became foundational Black Americans who were in the Caribbean first, all right? We can't go back to the Caribbean and get any type of citizenship or be a part of CARICOM, all right? That's for the people that's currently there now. See, people... They, they're trying to find ways to finesse it over here. And we're, no, 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 we're not letting that happen. But anyway, but thank you so much. <laughs> well, well, you well guess what? After <laughs> finding out this information. At least you tried, brother. See? Oh, the tethers are trying, family. <laughs> oh, the tethers are trying. The, the tethers are, uh, the, the little tether wheels are spinning. All right, family. See, this is why. We got a, a lot of this stuff we got to address. Let's see, when we go do the rally for reparations, see a lot of the criteria, we got to address all that stuff. That has to be addressed because, man, the, the finesse wheels are spinning with a lot of people. I just did a, a broadcast called Reparations Roulette showing how a lot of these groups are now trying to finesse their way into our lineage. A lot of people are now trying to claim FBA lineage. Well, I'm Liberian, and a lot of FBA that went to Liberia, you know, uh, they're trying to know. We got to understand, sometimes you, you forfeit a lot of stuff. You understand? When, when your family leave and go somewhere else, there's a lot of things that you forfeit, all right? So you, you can't really circle back around and then make a claim after you done bounced, like you done got up out your chair, like you, 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 you get up out your chair, you lose your seat. Listen, I was born in Detroit. I was born in Detroit as a child. My, my first few years, uh, I lived in Detroit. I haven't lived in Detroit. Well, I would go back in the summers when I was a teen and sometimes I would go back and stay with my aunt. But for the most part, I don't know shit about Detroit. You know, Detroit is completely foreign to me. And I love Detroit. My family's still out there. But I'm, it, Detroit is foreign to me. I don't know my way around Detroit no more. You know, I go to Detroit, I get lost. I don't know my way around Detroit. I'm not, I can't claim Detroit like that. I was born there, but I don't really claim Detroit. I'm a foreigner when I go back to Detroit. I don't know my way around. Um... You know, all the people that I'm cool, I'm really clicked in with my family there. You know, most of the time they come out here to see me, but I'm West Coast. I'm a West Coast dude. I'm an L.A. dude. I've been out here um, all of my adult life, much of my teen life. I've been out here most of my life. So I know everything, all the aesthetics of Los Angeles. You know, it's part of the street culture. Hell, I help shape some of the street culture out here. You understand? I'm L.A. all day. You see, so a lot of times when you lose your, you get up out your seat, you lose your seat. So same thing with people. If your family ended up going to or being shipped to Liberia or they were here, but then they got sent somewhere else, you're not FBA. Yeah. You're not foundational black American anymore. Yeah. You've had an ethnogenesis. You became a different ethnic group. Yeah. You became something else. You had another ethnogenesis. You see, we got to look at it from that standpoint. Just like when some of us were brought over from Africa and some of the aboriginal tribes, we spoke different languages, but when we encountered the white supremacists and we got thrown together, we had An ethnogenesis. We became a different group. You understand? So a lot of black people, just like these Native American tribes, there were black, there were a lot of black Choctaw, but now, because of circumstances, you're not a part of the Choctaw tribe no more. You're not a part of that tribe no more. Because, you know, the white supremacists infiltrated those tribes and they made sure to expel a lot of the black people. So we're just not a part of those tribes like that no more. 
you know, let's keep it a buck. We've had an ethnogenesis. So we got to understand how an ethnogenesis work. So a lot of people, y'all can't circle back when you immigrate here saying, hey, man, um, 300 years ago, my grandfather was in Virginia. And then they, they shipped him uh, back to the Congo. I want some reparations. No, you're going to have to go holler at the African Union. All right, let's get Dr. Groper in the building. Dr. Groper. All right. And Chattical, I have you on. If you got something else to ask, I have you on. But if y'all are trolling about the Paul thing, well, yeah, don't even do that. But if you got a genuine question, um, go ahead and knock yourself out. But the the little Paul troll thing that y'all doing, it, 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 you know, white supremacists, y'all, it, it, some of you guys are so mediocre and your troll shit falls flat and you just do shit to become annoying but yeah the the humor is not there no more so just come with a better question to make the shit interesting um dr groper what's up man hey what's up tyree what's up groper hey um long time listener all right now where you from groper i can't say that okay what are you you a witness protection program what the hell you mean you can't say it who are you to not say where you're from Well, the, the main reason I'm calling is I just wanted to see if you wanted to join Paul Allen's show. Yeah, that's not funny. It fell flat, dude. That that fell flat three calls ago. No, nah, but... There's, it, uh, it, it, there, the, the trolling ain't funny. No, but there's a fallacy the, to your the, claim. The, the trolling ain't funny no more, y'all. No, but this, this is why white supremacists depend on white supremacy. Y'all do shit that just ain't funny. It's not interesting. It, it becomes lame. And I think y'all think the lameness of it, that's the joke. Yes. I guess that's why y'all need Black Daddy. Chattical, what's up, man? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's the thing. is, I don't think anybody's trolling you. I think that they legitimately yeah, want you to come it, out. It, They've it, had a lot of people come on their show. Um, yeah, but it's not very interesting conversations. It, well, no, it's not I don't think anybody's trying to be funny, though. It's I not, think it, you're thinking that fault. they're thinking it's a joke, but it, they legitimately it, it want you to flat. come on and they actually want to talk to you. Okay, it fell flat four or five calls ago. Now, what else is on your mind, Chad? Well, I'm just sitting here. Uh, have you ever had a, a dark chocolate covered cranberry? Pretty good. Um, but beyond that, I've been working on uh, I've been working on an app lately. I told you about it before. Um, thought I was trolling. I was trying to post a video of it and show you all the progress I've made. But um, I've showed it to a bunch of other people in the FBA circles, and they all um, they all seem to think that it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, you're going to be able to go pick a bar based on demographics. So, like, if you only want to be around black people, you can filter by. Uh, a bar that has only black people in it that you'll be presented. Yeah, that that just it's not witty, man. No, no, it's not witty. It's a little God app. Damn. I've got white the supremacy. source code on my computer. But Paul Allen's in here. You should bring him up. Well, that white supremacist wit is so damn dry. God, nah, I don't claim to be funny. You know, it, it, it's I'm not kind of autistic. I'm kind of like bad at doing. God damn, you guys are so unfunny. Good Lord, you white supremacist males are so unfunny. No wonder your women are bouncing on black dicks all over the place. Lord, they just want some. <laughs> they want something entertaining without mundane white supremacist dry wit. Lord. All right, let's try some more people here. This is the 50th anniversary of hip hop and we still have a lot of discrepancies as far as the origins of hip hop, a lot of claims, who did what, who was the first this, who was the this and that and such and such. But at the end of the day, we need a definitive story, all right? And that story can only be told by the founders of this culture. Like everything was being driven and influenced by young, black, American culture. Like the slang, the style of dress, the initial uh, music that we chose. Look at uh, all the furrows. You got, you know, money making Manhattan and money earning Mount Vernon and Crooklyn. The Bronx was the boogie down Bronx. We was partying up there. I am Coke LaRock, the first MC of hip hop. First cat to pick the mic up. I introduced rapping to the turntables because when I came with it, nobody in the world was doing it. I'm right after Rudy Ray Moore. They want to come in the mix, they want to say, I was, we started. No, no you didn't, no you didn't, no you didn't. 
What can be known as hip hop was solely an African American creation. What would you get out of some Jamaican toast? What is that? I've never heard of a rapper use a Jamaican toast or a Jamaican flu as a rhyme. I never heard of it, and I don't know where that myth came from. My name is Legendary Kane Trixie from the Bronx, BX, from the West Side. I am the first break dancer. And that narrative that hip hop has had three founding fathers that's been rolling for the last almost 30 years, which isn't true. You don't have just three people who created hip hop. Hip hop was created by a number of different people. I am the grandfather, the godfather of the graffiti culture. I am the first element of hip hop. The roots of hip hop being Jamaican, absolutely false. My name is MC Shah Rock. I am a founding member of the MC slash rap culture. Cassette tapes was the internet of our time. It just traveled around by hand. Well, I know for a fact that the B-Boy stand started from the gods, the five percenters that would be at the jams back in the days who were acting as security. If they get the real truth of how it all was created, then so many lives would not be able to be in existence.